Volker Verschoor. I'm a UX designer in the image guided therapy team. And I work mostly on the new and developing technologies in that, in that area, in the con context of minimally invasive surgery. There's no typical day uh, in the life of uh, the work that I do. You analyze the situation, uh, you, you try to find the problems, think of solutions for that problem, and then build something and test it with users. That's, that's as simple as that, I guess. So my name's Penny, and I'm an interaction designer at Philips. I've been there for about two and a half years. Essentially, my role is to um, help the researchers turn emerging technologies into usable products. I think I've always been sort of fascinated by uh, the potential of new technologies and, the, and the, uh, the possibilities that they bring for creating new experiences. And um, I think at being in health tech at Philips is just a unique opportunity to do that in a space where it really has the potential of like impacting people's lives. And this is of course not only of the, the patients and their families, but like also the, the, the healthcare staff that is treating those patients. Design for healthcare is, is, is very challenging. There's things that you want to do as a designer. Sometimes you want to be somewhat more creative or elaborate in your designs, but you have to really bring yourself back down to earth. And um, that's not necessarily to say like building the algorithms to make things happen, but helping define how those algorithms may serve a purpose. The field that I work in, in the area that in, within Philips that I work in, um, we are involved very early in the process. So often if you're doing uh, like the final designs then you get involved quite late, but because we're exploring uh, new technologies in new areas, um, they also, we also need to, they can provide help in all kinds of other ways. It's like visualization of workflows and uh, people research. Um, yeah, so it's really at the start of when the project get kicked off is the ideal moment that we would like to be involved. The, uh, so interventional radiologists um, using Philips systems came to Philips and um, really wanted a better way of using, uh, using the interventional systems. So using the systems in the cath labs, they have a space that is just full of equipment and people and trying to optimize for viewing of these images that guides their procedures. That was something that they really wanted and they really need. IGT, image guided therapy, is about um, providing ways to treat patients minimally invasively. Um, and there are all kinds of tools that help do, do this. Right? So imaging systems or other smart systems to help the physician know what's going on inside the body. I, I'd say a good analogy for this is um, uh, using a maps application where you can see a route and you're trying to follow that with your car. Uh, although more and more surgery is being done minimally invasively, uh, and that's being enabled by all kinds of new uh, imaging technologies and other smart systems and devices, that that's also bringing in practice a lot of clutter to the, to the, the operating theater and um, screens and controls everywhere. Um, and that can be a challenge in itself. Physicians, as I said, have their hands often busy, so uh, they want a hands-free way to control systems. And so we're experimenting with exploring using eye gaze for that. With the use of AR, it's um, definitely an extension of um, the user's abilities, and it's giving them this superpower in a sense where they can control everything from their perspective and you don't need to rely on other people to do things anymore. I think everything is within your reach and um, that's the kind of magic of augmented reality is that it turns you into a little bit of a superhero. <laughs> We're working with the HoloLens 2 in this project, uh, which is the second release of HoloLens from Microsoft. And what they focused on this release, aside from creating the, this virtual content that can be placed and react to the physical environment, uh, they also focused on what they call natural interaction. So you can use your voice, your, your hands, and even your eyes to interact with the virtual content, uh, making a much more natural way of interacting with, uh, with digital systems. And our initial designs have had a lot of feedback and things were flashing and moving about. Uh, but in the, in the end, actually, I think due to this process of really collaborative uh, prototyping with the developers, we iterated reasonably quickly towards the solution that, and in the end, was also like one of the key and well, most well-received features of our demo that we showed to like over 400 physicians at uh, the SCI conference. Whatever we create for tomorrow, there's much higher expectations of what that should be than how functional that should be because because there's just been so much improvement over time. Um, and so, yeah, it's a challenge for a designer and for, a, for an engineer to make 
whatever we use tomorrow instantly perfect. And I think yeah, if, we, uh, if we do our job well and get that technology out of the way as much as possible and allow them to focus on treating the patient and providing that care, that's what I think one of the, what drives me most.